Good morning, men. Last week, I spoke, was invited to speak to the Congressional Prayer Caucus, and uh, I don't often tell you about the things I do, but this one was kind of interesting, and I know that they're interested in having you know they're out there, so I thought I'd just mention it. In 2005, a, a number of congressmen and congresswomen who really have a, uh, who are boldly evangelical and have a passion for both Christ and our country, decided to start meeting once a week when Congress is in session in room 219, just off the floor of the House of Representatives, to pray for our nation. And so uh, about 16 uh, congressmen and congresswomen uh, trickled in after making a vote on the floor last Monday. And we uh, talked a little bit about some, some of their personal issues and uh, then about the state of the nation, and then they prayed. And I just have to tell you, it was so encouraging and so hopeful to hear these congressmen and these congressmen passionately praying Second Chronicles 714 for, for our country, that uh, we, would, uh, God, we would humble ourselves and repent and turn from our wicked ways, and that there would be revival in the land, and that God would spare us, and that they would have wisdom. And it was so thrilling and I was thinking as they were praying, uh, you know, that room, room 219, that's where the fate of the world is being uh, determined. It's not down on the house floor. It's right there in that room. And you can find out more about that if you want at prayercaucus.org, prayercaucus.org. And they would love to have you pray for them as, as they pray for each other in the nation. So it's very encouraging. Men, God is with us right here in this room this morning, right now. And the purpose of us gathering, one of them, is to usher ourselves into the real presence of God. Because if you don't have an experience with God this morning, then you've wasted your time. This is for naught. We're doing a series on, uh, called Hanging Out with Jesus. We're doing a series within the series on the Sermon on the Mount. Now, uh, I mentioned that Everything Jesus said can fit into about 10 30-minute sermons. The Sermon on the Mount can be delivered in about 18 minutes. And it is one of the most compact distillations of the essence, well, that's a lot of words, the essence of Jesus' teaching. And this passage today is very poignant because we live in very troubled times. And we have already seen how Jesus guarantees that he will meet all of our necessities. Now we're actually going to move from necessities into good gifts, beyond necessities, other things, good gifts for us that he is, he is actually telling us that God will give to us. So the title of this talk this morning is... Good gifts available for the asking. Let's read our text. We're at Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, and we'll read through verse 12. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven get, give good gifts to those who ask Him? In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So it says it right there. How much more will your Father in heaven get, give good gifts to those who ask him. 
Why does this text touch us so deeply? Why does it move us so? I think, first of all, because we want it to be true. Oh, don't you want that to be true? And, and, uh, and you may, because you are a man of faith, you are, may already believe it's true. But you also want to believe that it's true for you. And if you believe it's true and you believe it's true for you, beyond that, you also, you want to be worthy. You want to be worthy to receive the good gifts that you ask for, that God promises to give. Wow. Now, one issue that I need to mention up is that we want to be very careful that this does not end up sounding like a prosperity gospel. Like you can ask God for anything that you want uh, and, uh, and receive it just, just for the asking. There's much more to this text than that, and that's what we're going to look at. So, first of all, what is a good gift? Really, two questions that we'll want to answer. The first is, what are the good gifts that we can ask God for with this kind of confidence? And then secondly, how can we explain not getting that for which we have asked, sought, and knocked? And then the third part of the talk this morning, adjustments to the way we think and live. Okay, so the, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what are the good gifts that we can ask God for with confidence. We read the passage. It says, if you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to you if you ask? So let's start with a big idea today. It's this. If what you're asking for is really a good gift, it's yours. If what you're asking God for is really a good gift, then it's yours, man. You've got it. And so, <laughs> all right, let's see. List. I made up a list this morning. I made it up on a three by five card. I wrote at the top my ask, seek, knock list, and I dated it. And I'm, I was so moved yesterday about the, the truth of this and, the, and, the, uh, and believing it. And, uh, but I really was not moved to appropriate it personally until this morning as I was finishing my preparations off. And I said, you know what? This isn't for these guys. This is for me. This is for me. And, and so I want... No, the, 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 the gifts that I put down here, I've been bold. These are the good gifts that, that I'm, I've decided that I'm going to be asking God for. Now, the, 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 the word good in the Bible means, guess what? Good. <laughs> that which leads to happiness, that which leads to joy, that which leads to blessing. And then the word gift here is the word doma. It is not the word charisma that's used for the charismatic spiritual gifts. Uh, well, not just the charismatic spiritual gifts. Well, all the gifts are charismatic spiritual gifts because they're all charisma. But, but, but this is not the spiritual gifts like uh, teaching, preaching, healing, leadership, blah, 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 blah. It's the word doma. And it only occurs four times in the Bible. It occurs in this passage. It occurs in the... In the, uh, the parallel sermon that Jesus teaches later, that, in which he teaches a lot of these same points in Luke chapter 11. And, uh, and at that point, Jesus says, uh, you, you know, your heavenly father, you can ask him for good gifts. And, uh, and says, and he will give you the Holy Spirit. So that's one of the good gifts, obviously. And then in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, uh, is the third place where this word doma appears. And it does pertain to spiritual gifts at that point. So this could mean a spiritual gift. This could mean the Holy Spirit. And then third, Paul actually uses this in connection with a financial gift. 
So this can actually have to do with finances as well. Now, I think those are three representative uses. I don't think that's the comprehensive list. But I think at least this means the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, and financial gifts. And it may mean many other kinds of gifts as well. So here's my list. A spirit of wisdom. And that I would never lose my first love. Those would be, for me personally, those would be incredibly precious good gifts. And then, to avert the the existing financial crisis. My, my, our ministry's financial crisis. You know, the whole world's in a financial crisis. You're in a financial crisis. I know you are. Um, and that would be a good gift, the way I assess it. To fulfill the vision to engage every man in America with a credible offer and the resource to grow in my calling. Yes, that would be a gift. <laughs> that denominational and seminary presence, presidents would start calling, asking how man in the mirror can help them disciple every man in their denominations and all the pastors and they're going through their seminaries, potential pastors going through their seminaries. That all of my books would make the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> that man in the mirror, our ministry, would be endowed. That we would have a headquarters building that we would own free and clear for the holiness and the happiness for all my men, that's you, and all my friends. A guaranteed annual income. Why not? Health for my wife and, uh, and me uh, and the ability to enjoy it. For the health and prosperity of our children and their spouses. For the salvation and the protection of our grandchildren. Enough money so I could race my car again. I haven't had my car out in, in a year, just sitting in a garage. The ability to fulfill the marriage prayer, that I would love her, cherish her, hear her serve her, so that she would love him more and we could bring him glory. And I just threw this one in there as an afterthought, that I could understand my wife. Anyway. <laughs> So, these are good gifts. And uh, the big idea today is, if what you're asking for really is a good gift, it's yours. So, now I need to qualify and, and say that I think these are good gifts. But I don't know if they're good gifts. Let's look at some of the other parallel passages in the Bible because it's fascinating uh, we're not going to look these up, but I, I'm put, putting the addresses of the verses up here, so if you want to write them down, you can. In John 14, verse 13, Jesus says, And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. And then, faith. Jesus says in Matthew 21, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and do not doubt, you can say to this fig tree, be taken up and cast into the ocean, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask in prayer. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. If we ask anything according to His will, he hears us. And if He hears us, we know we have the thing that we have asked of Him. And then John 15, 7. Jesus says, If you remain in Me, if you abide in Me, and My words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. Luke 18. This is the parable of the persistent widow before the wicked judge. Then Jesus told His disciples a parable to show that they should always pray and not give up.
What a temptation now to put all kinds of qualifications on the words of Jesus, our God. But I'm not going to do that. This is, this is the Word of God. And if we really believe that what we're asking for is a good gift, and it really is a good gift, then it is ours. If we have faith, if we pray according to His will, if we pray in His name, if we're persistent, if we're abiding in Christ, if we are in Christ, when we pray, we are actually praying for the will of God. We have one of our own members who had a dream for a good gift. At the age of 45 years, Scott Thomas. Scott, where are you? Just stand up for a second, would you? This is Scott Thomas. Most of you know Scott. Good-looking guy, 45 years old, and this guy is ripped. And let me tell you why. You can sit down. And this year, at the beginning of this year, Scott decided to try out for a professional football team. Scott decided that he wanted to be a kicker for the Orlando Predators, the Arena Football League team here in Orlando. And so he began his preparations. And uh, at first, everybody thought he was crazy. His wife thought he was crazy. His kids thought he was crazy. But Scott was determined, and he's out in the front yard practicing, and he has these three young kids, and, and, and they started getting inspired by what Scott was doing, and, and uh, then the neighbors started getting inspired by that Scott was actually going to do this. He was actually going to, to go after the dream of being a professional football player, a kicker in the Arena Football League. Lots of pain, knots. Lots of issues to work through. But it's given him an incredible platform to talk about his reasons for doing that and his faith in God. It, is, it has been an incredible example to his children that you can, you can try things in life, you can do things in life. It's inspired a whole group of people in this city to think beyond the ordinary possibilities. And it's increased his communication with his wife in a, in a fantastic way. And so he went to the tryouts. And there were seven kickers trying out for the position. And he had a good day. It wasn't the best of all the kickers, but he had a really good day. And so it's not over yet. The story's not over yet. They haven't picked the final kickers. But here's the point. Whether Scott is actually selected to the final roster, he's already received his good gift. He's already received his good gift. He's gotten what he wanted. What, a, what a, an incredible icing on the cake it would be if at the age of 45 he actually made the team. And, we, and I pray he does. I pray he get another good gift. But the journey is the gift. The journey is the gift. And honestly, you know, I, I had other things on my list. I had my ASIC knock list last year, and it included, it included doing public speaking and leadership development. And I spent a lot of time and effort to develop that. And it wasn't God's will for that to succeed. But it was a good gift. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade that for anything, the experience of, of, of starting that enterprise and trying to make a go of it was fantastic. It was a good gift in and of itself. I think the way to think about getting these good gifts and asking for these good gifts, it's the context of a father-son relationship. 
it says your heavenly Father will surely give you good gifts if you ask. But you know that for those of you who have children, you want your children to ask you for anything, anything that's righteous, anything that's moral. Uh, but you are interested in their character development. You're interested in their humility. You're interested in their maturity. You're interested in their development as a, as a fine is a fine example of what it means to be a human being. And, and in the same way, we pray for whatever we ask, any good gift that we think we want, we, we are invited to pray for that in faith, according to His will, in His name, abiding in Christ. And, and we trust that our Father knows best. Father knows best. That's what it means to pray in His name. That's what it means to abide. That's what it means to, to ask according to His will. It means Father knows best. Don't take this the wrong way. But if you're 60 years old and you don't know Jesus Christ, to get cancer is a small price to pay for eternal life. Cancer is a good gift if it brings you to eternal life. Father knows best. If what you're asking for really is a good gift, it's yours. He will give it to you. The timing may be a little off. It may take, it might take 40 years. The timing may be a little off. Father knows best. Well, how do we explain not getting that which we ask, seek, and knock for? Well, we've already started into this, of course. The issue is really the details. God has to work out the details. There are lots of details that need to be worked out. Ron Zitza, who is my uh, driver coach, his dream as a young man, his good gift, the thing he wanted, was to be part of a professional race car driving team. And he is good. He actually won the Rolex 24 in class in the year 2000. He's a very good professional driver. But it's just never come together for him to have that, that professional ride. And you know what he said to me this week? He said this. He said, you know, nothing can be a gift. He said, when I was a young boy... All I wanted to do was be a race car driver. My dad was one. I, all I wanted to do was be a race car driver. And he said, but you know what? My, my grandmother, you know what she said? She said, Ron, you're going to be a teacher. You're going to be a teacher. And so you know what he is today? He's a teacher. He drives race cars. He's not part of the professional team, but he's, he, he said, you know, I am so content. This is... This is exactly what I was created to do, and I am so happy. And I know that if I had gotten the other thing that I had asked for, that I would be not nearly as happy, content, and joyful as I am. This is nothing is a gift. So sometimes we explain not getting what we want because God has something better for us than we can even dare to ask or imagine, Ephesians chapter 3. And then there are some other reasons we don't get what we want. Biblically, James chapter 1, verses 5 to 7, is that we, we don't ask in faith. You know, when you ask for the good gift, I made up my ask, seek, knock list, and now I'm going to give you a little foreshadowing of what's going to come. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to start an ask, seek, and knock list. 
And I'm going to ask you to be bold. You know, the, the world, the world will take away your dreams. The world will beat out of you the good gift that you really want. And so you end up asking for something less than what you really want. I want all of my books to be on the New York Times bestseller list. That's what I really want. Why? Because I believe that the more men we can get reading the books, the more men will come to Christ, the more men who will become disciples, the more families that will be rescued, the more marriages that will stay together, the more children that will not grow up in fatherless homes. I really believe that. And so, why wouldn't I? Pr- why would I? I look at the New York Times bestseller list and I'm thinking, well, you know, when I want to see one of the books that's trying to accomplish what I'm trying to do with my books on that list, or the books that are on that list <laughs> accomplishing what they're accomplishing. Don't settle. Don't settle. Why should you settle? Now, this is, again, the issue here, and caution, don't let this sound like a prosperity gospel, a name and claim it kind of thing. This is not it at all. This is Jesus. If you don't ask in faith, though, you won't get what you want. And if you ask with the wrong motives, James 4.3, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. John 9, verses 1 through 3. Just God's, what are God's larger purposes? Uh, this is the parable. Uh, and it's not the parable. It's actually the story of the man who is blind from birth. His, disciple asked, his disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the work of God may be displayed in his life. So God may have a bigger purpose for postponing or not giving you the good gift that you're asking for. Another reason would be it's not His will. Previous verses. Or you're out of fellowship. You're not abiding with Christ. Or that you give up. You're not persistent. All you have to do is ask. You don't need to know the magic word. You don't have to say things in some prayers in some particular order, and if you get it out of order, that that you get disqualified. When you're praying, you don't get disqualified if you peek. It's about your heart. It's about your heart. The big idea today is this. If what you're asking for really is a good gift, it belongs to you. Father knows best. Adjustments to the way we think and live. A couple of thoughts. Tap into these other verses. I think, you know, living in faith, praying according to His will, I think this abiding in Christ idea, just this idea of abiding in Christ, I think that captures it. If you wanted to name the cluster of all these things, I would just say, abide in Christ. Let His words be in you, and you remain in His words. And then you can ask for whatever you want, and it will be given to you. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. And now, now what I want you to do is I want you to take one of these 3 by 5 cards that's on the table, and I want you to write across the top, write this. Write my ask, seek, knock list, and then date it. My ask, seek, knock list. 
and then dated. Has everybody got one of these cards? Anybody need one of these cards? And now, I spent some time, obviously, thinking through my whole list. You don't have time right now to fill out your whole list. But what I would like you to do is I would like you to get started. What are one or two of the good gifts that you really long to have from God? Your motives are right. You're not asking with the wrong motives so that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Be bold. Hebrews 3 or 4 says, Therefore let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find help in our time of need. Be bold. Put down, put down, the, put down the, the, the good gifts that you really, really want. And then this is the big idea. If what you're writing down really is a good gift, it's yours. Don't know the timing. Father knows best. Nothing could be a gift. But if what you're asking for really is the good gift that God wants for you, it's yours. Jesus guarantees it. If that's not true, if, well, I can't almost rip the page out of my Bible to make a point here. If that's not true, just pretend I just ripped the page out of the Bible. That's true. What other pages are not true? If what you're asking for really is a good gift, it's yours. You don't know the details of how it's going to work out. In the meantime, do your duty. Abide in Christ. Believe. Pray in His name. Have faith. In the meantime, do your duty. While you're waiting on God to answer your prayer, we have one of our members who had a fant fantastic sales career. And in the meantime, waiting for his good gift, since he lost his position... He's bussing tables at a restaurant. But God has a good gift for him. We just don't know the details. And he has a good gift for you. And you don't know the details. But Father knows best. And if what you're asking for really is a good gift, it is yours. And that's the word of God. Let's pray. Our dearest Father, Lord, thank you for, thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for the power that's in your word. Thank you that you really are here with us. That the real presence of Jesus, you are here with us. Otherwise, this is for naught. Lord, I, uh, these are tough times. And it's, it's tempting to, to lose the faith. It's tempting to, to give up. It's tempting not to be bold. It's tempting to be timid. It's tempting to lower the good gifts that we want. Lord, I pray that you would help each man now to, in maybe in the next uh, few hours or the next few days, to, to go ahead and make a, fill out his ask, seek, knock list. To be bold. This is the confidence that we have in approaching you. 
that if we ask anything according to your will, we have that which we have asked. Give each of these men faith to believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.